The human journey in Africa is an ever-evolving one, beginning with stories about tribal warriors, warrior men who overcame oppressors multiple times in the same location over and over again. But how far back does the story of Africa go? At least, how far back does settled societies go in Africa? I have shown you pictures of Chad and how some of the oldest cattle in Chad goes back six, seven thousand BC. And this was speculation at its highest in those regions, but it was also based on some of the paint and carbon dating at the area, finding that it was a settled society at about 6,000 or 4,000 BC, meaning that their cattle was some of the oldest in Africa in general. Now, had we only found it in Chad, this would be something where we can go, it's good for Chad, but how do we know? Why only Chad? But it's not just Chad. Even though we find evidence of mud structures, the ones that you would find today in Africa in Chad from back in the day, we also find mud structures in other places in Africa mimicking this culture. This means Africans might have had cattle as early as any other place in the world, around 8,000 BC. That's where you start seeing cattle in places like China, Sumeria, and now Chad and Sudan. Sudan is one of those places where its history is obviously old and its connection to the rest of Africa is apparent. But people underestimated it because of its connections with Egypt. And when looking at Egypt and its magnificent structures, it seems to dwarf Sudan in a way where Sudan becomes undermined. The tribes that walk around Stark make people believe that they have been this way for thousands of years, but something you don't realize is every sophisticated piece of Egypt over its thousands of years was based off of things that were first cultivated 8,000 BC in Africa. Now this date also hits at something else. It hits at the fact that the people who were first thought to migrate into Africa and gave cattle culture and all of these things, they go from about 2000 BC, that's about as old, 3000, 2000 BC, that's about as old as some of those theories go. But finding cattle, finding settled societies, finding continued hunting, meaning it was a combination of an older culture with a newer culture at the same time in 8000 BC means that the likelihood that this culture came from outside has just diminished by a lot. In a study done called Cattle Before Crops, the beginnings of food production in Africa, they posit the idea that cattle was first domesticated in a serious way in Africa than food was. Now obviously food has been taking thousands of years to domesticate so it's not necessarily its entire process but the the fully functional phase. Now there is some evidence also in another study that shows that grain could have been introduced in Sudan as early as any of these cattle. In many areas of the world, current theories of agricultural origins emphasize yield as a major concern during intestification.
In Africa, however, the need for scheduled consumption shaped the development of food production. African cattle were domesticated during the 10th millennium BP by delayed return Saharan hunter-gatherers in unstable marginal environments where predictable access to resources was more significant problem than absolute abundance. Pastoralism spread patchily across the continent according to regional variation and relative predictability of herding versus hunting and gathering. Domestication of African plants was late after 4000 BP because of a high mobility of herders and risk associated with cultivation in arid environment. Renewed attention to predictability may contribute to understanding the circumstances that led to domestication in other regions of the world. Now, if we count together, the year right now is 2024. And so if we reverse, 10,000 BP is 8,000 BC. Now, before I talk about what this means for Africa in general, let's first return to Chad for a second because we need the proof in the same video. I sometimes make these mistakes, but not this time. Located in the center of North Africa, Landlocked Chad stretches from the Sahara Desert in the north to the savannah in the south. The country boasts thousands of rock engravings and painting located in two main areas, the Enendi Plateau and the Tibetzi Mountains. Both to the north, the depictions, the oldest of which date back to the 5th millennium BC, represent wild animals, cattle, and human figures. Paintings of highly detailed riders on camels and horses are especially numerous, as are groups of people around huts. Chadian rock art is particularly well known for its variety of local styles and indicates and includes some of the richest examples of Saharan rock art. Now, I want us to go back to that sentence so I can stop where the full stop stops. Uh, it says, the oldest of which date back to the 5th millennium BC represents wild animals, cattle, and human figures. Full stop. After this, everything else is at a different time. Paintings of highly detailed riders and camels and horses are especially numerous. So, 5th millennium BC in Chad, 8,000 BC in Sudan. Where did the people of Chad get it from? The assumption is they probably got it from Sudan. But if they got it from Sudan, that means there is a real connection between the people of Chad and the people of Sudan. One that goes beyond just continent or coincidence. Otherwise, we have to assume that like other places around the world cattle was being bred in chad at a very similar time that it was in the neighboring sudan it would be easy to think something this ridiculous had the people of chad not been so close to sudan the orange is sudan chad is the green now I want you to think about how easy it would be from one to move to the other, especially since the greening of Sudan is something that occasionally goes away, and this might have given them a reason to migrate. 8,000 BC, that is a long time ago, especially to travel with cattle. Now the question is, besides the fact that their entire lifestyle, I mean, if you think about hunter-gatherers in Africa, we, we always think of the sequence that we went from hunter-gatherer to farming to what we are today. But if you think about it, this means 
that the hunter-gatherer lifestyle in Africa, for the most part, is more of a choice than it was a lifestyle that had to be there. I mean, when did the Bantu first create hunter-gathering? I mean, cattle farming. When did the Niger Congolese do it? When did they first enter that? And given the fact that we found evidence that shows that iron and stuff like that might have been melted about 2000 BC in these regions, we can't say that exact time. Clearly, it goes back way further than that. Could it be the exact same time as Chad, about 4000 BC? Or is it even far back, which would be even stranger and would probably confirm the fact that even though the rock paintings are from 4000 BC in Chad, that they might go back even further than that. But think about the settled society, 8000 BC. Uh, okay, firstly, I want you guys to clear your mind because even I have a hard time picturing 8000 BC, especially in Africa. If we time travel back in time and we start thinking about everything there was back then. Remember, there are trees in Africa that are large enough where people can literally live inside them. And this is prior to the time when people were burning bushes in order to clear up the land. Even though it could have been possible that they did that given the fact that they have cattle. I still make mistakes of thinking of them as hunter-gatherers. but how did they how did they figure it out back then and if they were figuring this out back then what else were they figuring it out because remember a lot of the arguments for sophistication is that domestication happened early this means that the concept the idea that africa was playing catch up to the rest of the world is not true i mean if we look at some of the hardest evidence of when the people in China uh, had domesticated cattle. It's about 5,000 to 4,000 years before present. Well, that was the old evidence. And then now we've got even older ones that show that it's about the same time as those in Sudan. That doesn't help because if the people in Sudan are domesticating cattle at about the same years, it means that it's not really a trade, but more of a self-discovery. So let's read a few studies about cattle from outside of Africa. The domestication of cattle is generally accepted to have taken place in two independent centers around 10,500 years ago in the Near East, giving rise to modern Taurine cattle, and two millennia later in Southern Asia, giving rise to Zebu cattle. Here we provide firmly date morphology and genetic evidence for early Holocene management of Taurin cattle. Now, why would I care to read about these ones that talk about cattle being moved into Africa? Well, the reason why I think it's important to address this theory is because it tells you that you can move... First of all, it tells you that the world was a larger network in general in the past. I mean, the fact that the cattle could get as far as Chad moving in from the Middle East and places like that and China is kind of crazy. It's kind of a big deal. It means that ideas that came from China would, as early as they were created, move in to Africa maybe within... A thousand years, five hundred years, who knows? I mean, <laughs> look look how close the dates are between when they're first discovered. I mean, the oldest one is about ten thousand BP in China, the Taurin type cattle, which are similar to the types of cattle you get in Africa. But ten thousand BP is eight thousand BC, which means 
and we saw Sudan was 8,000 BC. Within a hundred years, they were already in the same location. And this is the best evidence they have so far that it goes that that, that year back in China. So if we explore this theory of they came from the Middle East and moved in, two things arise. First, just because you move cattle or anything does not mean your population gets changed. I've shown you that in Chad, the Middle Eastern genetics are basically not present until the Arabs move in in the 600, 700 AD. This is proof. This is real. This isn't some talking point. This is real life. That DNA is not present at all until about that date. But secondly, it also tells us that, because if you move one way, you can move the other way. It also tells us that it's not completely impossible that Africans were moving out of Africa at about that date as well. And those images of elephants that I showed might be an indication of that. This giant network also tells us a story that is that is crazy. I mean, think about it. We're, we're talking about China and Africa being connected in a way where something that was domesticated in China is visible in Africa within a couple hundred years. But let's remove that for a second. Let's remove the idea that it came from outside or anything like that. What does that mean for Africa? What does that mean for Africa that the history of the land is no different than any other when it comes to development? That when you look at the Europe, Africa, the Americas, or any other place, you don't see a lag you don't see us having, like, you go, okay, so this is where Africans started slowing down. This is why Africa is behind on some things. You don't see that. You only start to see that in the 1800s. Another issue is the issue of farming and growing. Why is the culture of Africa so different when it comes to cultivation than other cultures outside of Africa. I mean, the fact that they utilize women more than they utilize men, when it is other cultures utilize men, is already one of those big differences. But something else is the fact that in within Africa, this is what they call the porridge theory, where there was less grain and more, you know, certain types of things that we grind and create porridge like things now the word porridge is going to throw you off they're not really porridge it's just they're not baked they're not turned into baked products which is what a lot of things that people eat outside the way as in africa there's a lot of frying a lot of boiling a lot of cooking in the general sense of the word in the real sense of the word of cooking whereas outside there's a lot of bread and stuff like that but then go back to africa and look at the cattle culture and realize that the cattle culture is not the same. I mean, people worship cattle all over the world, and for obvious reason, but the culture is not the same. I mean, if you look at the way that the people in Egypt worship cattle, and Sudan, they worship cattle. I mean, human sacrifice, cattle sacrifice exists in that area. So in some cases, the lives of cattle are seen as the same as that of humans. You see, settled societies are not the same as hunter-gatherers. Hunter-gatherers are pretty fascinating, but their ideas still range around hunter-gathering. But settled societies need something else. And I've said it on my channel. What do they need? The seasons. So they look to the moon and create months and days 
and years, mainly months. There's some cultures that are not too concerned with the years. A lot of them in Africa actually don't care about what year it is. They care about what month it is and how long ago was it since the last full moon. But the reason why this is important is because, it again, if you reverse time, you know, the way we think about it is, you go back to Africa about 10,000 BC, you'll see a bunch of people just running around, you know, hunting and gathering. And then at some point, they stop hunting and gathering and start becoming settled people and then blah, blah, blah. This has been shattered over and over and over again. It's actually puzzling because if you have settled societies, it means you have settlements. If you have settlements, where are they? Is there buried in Africa somewhere? Because Africa changes. Its environment is so, it fluctuates so heavy that a lot of the things that we have created thousands of years ago could be buried deep. And Africa is not the best place to preserve things. If they're made of rock, yes, but, you know, other stuff is getting eaten by the ground, by the trees, by everything else that's around. Not to mention the violent desert and greening and desert and greening. That's not going to be fun to dig up the historical evidence. Now, I would obviously like to challenge that um, research that we read earlier on ResearchGate, where it said that there was domesticated cattle before there were domesticated plants. Now, the answer is, uh, how do they treat the cattle before that? How do they feed the cattle? Now, obviously, cattle tends to be fed by grass, but a lot of places, they plant the grass that they're going to eat. And so... Like all the other historical food people talked about, human beings have been moving wild grain for tens of thousands of years. And so maybe that's why it was so easy to get cattle. Now, I, I, I'm kind of confused about the cattle thing. Was it just cattle? Did they not have any other animals at the region? I mean, we read over there that they had cattle and they had other animals, but what were they? When were sheep domesticated or anything like that? Now, again, it feels small if you look at the monuments and everything in Egypt. It feels like a small thing, but remember, paint a picture in your head of ancient China. If you cannot see how they ate, and how, you cannot paint the full picture of ancient China. And so Africa needs this before we can go back because a lot of you you've ever seen a movie about africa like all of a sudden you see just cattle walking around and everything and blah 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 but they never give you the full scope this is because the other research is left out the other stuff is left out and this is one of the important things how do these people feed themselves where do they keep these cattle that means they built things out of wood to hold back the stay the the cattle these crawls to hold back cattle even back then is that possible that would mean not only were they far away from hunter gathering but they were literally in another era and how long did they spend in that era because for some reason we see a transition from let's take chad for example so because that one is a bit like making sense from 5000 BC, we find uh, cattle, and then all of a sudden, in about 3000, 2000 BC, we find iron working and stuff. Did one inspire the other? By the way, the 3000 BC, do not quote me on that. I'm just throwing out a date out there, but iron has been discovered in Africa for a long time, and then we find things that were places where you can melt down metals that go back thousands of years but we don't know exactly you know when they were first cultivated but it seems obvious that in Africa it was iron was discovered first or at least made iron was 
made first in Africa than these other places. Again, you need a complete picture. If you're going to paint in your head the picture of what happened in Africa, you can't leave this out. And this is why I emphasize on it. This is why I emphasize on the females. This is why I emphasize on all of that because I want to make sure that you get a clear picture in your head of what I'm talking about. You know, you've heard some people talk about how... Never mind. Let's not even get into that. 